C. D. You have it. You're not alone. I have it too. That's a bad one. Shut up. Hey guys, welcome back. You may be wondering, Mark, why the hell are you walking in a bunch of rain? Well, I wanted to show you guys something. Hey, Rain, stop it. See how it didn't stop raining? Yeah, that's kind of like how OCD is. You'll be like, hey, OCD, stop it. Guess what happens? It doesn't go away. In fact, it'll only get stronger. The more you want it to stop, the stronger it'll get. So what I'm trying to say is the less you care about the thoughts that come into your head, the easier OCD is going to be able going to be to deal with. All right. That, that's the lesson I'm trying to say. here. I just want to start this by saying OCD is a very serious mental illness. It impacts a lot of people and for the people it impacts, they're 10 times more likely to commit suicide. Today, I'm going to share my story. This is a very difficult topic for me to talk about. A time in my life which I've sort of purposely blocked out of my memory. I'll try to remember as many details as possible, but you won't get the full story. I've only shared this with a few friends and family members. Yeah, this is a little weird for me, sharing it with my audience. Here, here you go. My symptoms of OCD all started around the seventh grade. It's possible it started when I was younger, but this is when it got really bad for me. Remember, it all started suddenly. My cat had thrown up. Now, you may be thinking, Mark, how the hell does this have to do with OCD? Just, just keep listening now. I had smelled this weird smell. I didn't know where it was coming from. As I walked past people in the hallways, they were like, Ew, what is that smell? And I was like, I don't fucking know. I don't know what that smell is. But uh, as the day went on, I realized that it was coming from me. I didn't know where it was coming from still, like, why I smelled like that. But when I got home, I had realized that it was on the bottom of my shoe. The cat threw up. So that's why I smelled that day. So the next day when I went into school, I got this anxious feeling as I walked into the school. It was not a normal feeling for me. I had not been used to this this sensation. It, I still smelled the smell that from the day prior. Little did I know it was just a hallucination. It was a, an olfactory hallucination. That took me a little bit to remember, but that's what it's called. And it's caused by anxiety. So I thought to myself, what if I still smell? Like, what if the smell didn't go away? And this is where I started having problems. So I went straight to the bathroom. I avoided people in the halls on the way to the bathroom. I started sniffing myself. I was like, what the hell? Like, do I still smell? And turns out I didn't, but I thought I did. I had olfactory hallucinations. I still smelled it, the cat throw up, but it wasn't there. All right, I had been perfectly clean. I showered, I put on deodorant, I brushed my teeth. I changed, had clean clothes on, had clean shoes on. So there was nothing to make me smell, but I still smelled it, right? What did I do? I hid in the bathrooms, all right? I sat by myself at lunch and I tried my best to avoid everyone in the hallways every single day. What I would also do was I would go to the nurse's office, basically to avoid class. Not only would I go to the nurse's office, I would tell the nurse like I was physically sick, like almost every single day trying to get out of school. All because I had this crazy anxiety that I couldn't control. And this was all before I got diagnosed with OCD. I didn't know what the hell was wrong with me. I thought I was just crazy. I thought I smelled bad and as soon as I got home, I told my parents, I was like, D do I smell bad? Like, do I smell? And they would, they would tell me, no, you don't smell at all. And I would just keep asking them, like, every single day after school, I'd be like, do I smell? And they'd be like, no, you don't smell, Mark. Why? Like, they would think, like, why, why does he think he smells? I, it was my OCD, and I, I had no clue at the time. I remember one day, 
I got ganged up on by my teachers because I was in the team center. That's a place where our class is connected on our team and there were different teams. So hopefully that explains it. I remember they ganged up on me and they, they just kept yelling at me to leave. They, they yelled at me, they were like, you gotta get out of here, like leave. And I was just, I was a scared, depressed, anxious little boy. And I didn't want to go in those hallways. Those hallways were like hell to me. Like it would get really bad for me. Um, sorry, this is difficult for me to talk about. Like I'm almost like my, my eyes are almost like watering and shit. But um, I, I didn't know what the hell was wrong with me. I, that's what I was thinking. Like, what the hell is wrong with me? Why am I like this? I, I don't understand. Like, why why can't I go in the hallway? I feel like if I go in the hallway, I'm just going to get more anxious and it's, it's going to cause me to smell more bad. In reality, I didn't smell. But this was my brain telling me that I did smell. And I would even avoid sitting certain places. I would avoid touching certain things because I was scared it would like contaminate me or make me smell worse. There was even a specific person who I didn't want to be around. I was actually seated next to them and I purposely moved because they had very bad hygiene. And guess what happened? They didn't let me move. <laughs> so I was over here getting anxious all class and I was just like, oh God, like I'm gonna smell like this person. I'm gonna smell even worse than I did before. The, the smell's gonna get on me. That That's the type of stuff I thought about. At this time, I had hated myself. I didn't understand what was wrong with me. In my mind, I had every right to hate myself. I I was alone in my head all the time. I couldn't tell people, like I, I felt like I couldn't tell people because it's embarrassing to talk about. It's not something that normal kids suffer with or struggle with. So I thought like, I'm alone. I, I have to deal with this by myself. Cause my parents, like they would just tell me like, you don't, you, you, you don't smell. And I, that wouldn't help me because they, they had not known how to treat OCD. They're not like a therapist or anything. So they just told me like, no, you don't smell. You don't smell, you don't smell you don't smell and i would just be like okay i think i smell anyway even though you're not even though you're telling me i don't smell i remember one day i wrote a suicide note during class and i thought i was going to end my life that day like i i was dead set on killing myself that day um but i didn't because my teacher mrs d I'm not going to say her name, but Mrs. D, she helped me realize how how valuable my life was. She told me all the right things that I needed to hear in that moment. And she didn't even know I wrote a note. She didn't know I wrote a suicide note. She would have probably called my parents or something. But I, I threw that suicide note out right after that. And I had, that was a kind of a turning point for me where I started researching OCD finding out what I can do to help fix this problem. I had done a lot of exposure work and that was basically doing the opposite of what my OCD would tell me. It would tell me not to go in the hallways. I would go in the hallways. It would tell me to hide in the bathrooms. I wouldn't hide in the bathrooms. It would tell me go to the nurse's office. I wouldn't go in the nurse's office. So this was incredibly difficult at the start. Like incredibly difficult it felt like hell i felt like i was going to just cease to exist or something like like imagine thinking that you smelled horrible and then walking past hundreds of kids thinking that that you smelled horrible imagine living that with that every single day of your life that's horrible man like you don't you don't you don't understand how bad it got for me like how miserable i was because of it 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 got to a point where i just i couldn't handle it like i couldn't handle it i'd done exposure work and it helped motivate me because i knew i could get better i could i could do this so 
I stopped. I tried to stop caring about the thoughts in my head. Try, I just, I told myself like, this is just OCD, man. You can't fight OCD by giving in to what it tells you to do. You can't fight OCD that way. The only way you can fight it is by letting go, pushing yourself through the worst things that you don't wanna do. It'll tell you, oh, avoid people. You know what I did? You know what I did? Went right up to people, went right past them, a foot away. I just told myself, I don't care. It is what it is. If I smell, I smell, it doesn't matter. And guess what? After a while, that started to help. And eventually, it got to the point I wasn't even thinking about it. My anxiety got better. I wasn't sweating profusely because of anxiety anymore. And guess what? That sweating profusely, it made me, made the thoughts worse. It made me think I smelled more. And it's possible I did smell at the time. It's possible because I was sweating so much from anxiety. Let's be honest. I probably did smell a little bit, but not like how my head was making me think I smelled. Years down the line, like 11th grade, I went back to that school and I had walked in the door. I had no anxiety, no fear, no nothing. I didn't smell nothing other than that weird school smell, but that's all I smelled. Just think about this. If you're struggling with OCD, you can get through it. You can fight through it. More cases of OCD are more severe than mine. I still struggle with OCD. Like, I still have messed up thoughts, like thoughts that make me question myself. But you gotta realize, like, you aren't your OCD. Your OCD isn't you, all right? It's a part of your brain that tries to trick you and play games with you. That's not you. You're not your OCD. You're much more than your OCD. All right, you bring more value than just, oh, I have OCD. Like, no. Stop labeling yourself as this person who's incurable, who can't do normal things that other people can. You gotta stop doing that. You gotta stop thinking to yourself that my OCD will always be horrible. I'll never do anything worthwhile in my life. Like, I'm miserable. I can't live a normal life. Like, no. Stop it. Stop it. It might not go away completely. It won't ever go away completely. It can still get better if you put in the work. If you learn to live with your OCD, learn to live with yourself. It can get better. You gotta tell yourself that it can get better. As long as you put in the effort. You can't cure OCD without putting in effort. It, it takes a, a mental toll. It takes a lot out of you. But in the end, you'll get just a little bit better. And that that's worthwhile. That's worth it.